Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia is mourning the loss of a cultural icon. The Department of Sustainable Development embraces solutions in nature this biodiversity day and a show of appreciation to the frontliners. She was instrumental in the recording and preservation of indigenous music. Joyce Ogis, 76, died on the morning of Thursday, 21st May, 2020. Harris Anissa Antoine. Tributes have begun pouring in for Joyce Ogist, local music icon, eminent folklorist, and one of the pioneers in production and recording of St. Lucia folk music. Miss Ogist's contribution to chorale and folk music has been immeasurable and she was instrumental in the recording and preservation of indigenous music. Miss Ogist is best known for her research and promotion of the music of St. Lucian folklorists, including Cecen Descartes, Eric Adley, and Florita Marquis. In addition to her many music compilations, she published St. Lucia Sings, a book of St. Lucian folk songs in 1984, and Oral and Folk Traditions of St. Lucia in 1986. During her many years as a music education specialist with the government of St. Lucia, she coordinated numerous research and training programs on local culture and folklore. In the 1970s and 1980s, she led the popular folk band Uranora Voices, which were instrumental in the resurgence of folk music. Miss Auguste's talents went way beyond singing, and she was also well known for her sporting prowess in the netball arena. In 1969, she received the award for Sports Woman of the Year and represented St. Lucia regionally and internationally in the sporting discipline. In April 2000, she was named in the OAS list of outstanding women of the 20th century and was inducted into the Hall of Fame for both sports and music. The Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, expressed her appreciation for the work done by the late Joyce Ogeest. Joyce, of course, has been an icon in St. Lucia, in St. Lucian culture and um, People like me, one of her students really, um, from the era when we did music, you know, in schools, across the primary schools in St. Lucia in 1973, 74 day about. Um, and of course for me too, Joyce was an outstanding person. She was an outstanding St. Lucian sportswoman. Um, she was our first sportswoman of the year in St. Lucia in 1968, 69, they about. Um, and of course, you know, as a country, we, we, we owe it to her, you know, to celebrate her life. You know, um, she, she deserved a lot. She worked a lot from the, the, you know, from the north and south, the length and breadth of this country. She gave service to our country. And so we have to acknowledge and respect, you know, the contribution that she has made. And um, I'm happy that, of course, our country did that. She has been awarded time and time again for her efforts. And um, we, 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 we can only continue to show appreciation for people like Joyce. In between music and sports, Miss Auguste also served as a justice of peace and coordinator of various national activities. In 1978, she received the singular honor of having her photograph on the 10 cent stamp of St. Lucia. She is noted as the pioneer of the Festival of Carols, and in 2017, she was awarded Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, OBE. Denise Joyce August's achievements will continue to inspire many in sports and music throughout St. Lucia. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. As St. Lucia joins other Caribbean islands in recommencing economic activity, nationals are urged to continue their roles as key partners in maintaining the low levels of COVID-19 transmission. Anisia Antoine tells us more. As of May 20th, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 18 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and over 900 individuals have been placed in both quarantine and isolation. Currently, between 250 and 280 people are in quarantine and approximately 68 people are in isolation. 
Dr. Michelle Fassois, national epidemiologist at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, indicated that despite St. Lucia maintaining a low transmission level of COVID-19, the public remains at risk and must remain vigilant as the threat persists. In St. Lucia to date, um, COVID has manifested very mildly and I don't want the public to let their defenses down by me saying so. We are very pleased that it has not, we have not seen these complicated cases, cases that require ICU or severe cases. Um, our cases have all recovered. Um, they are doing quite well. Um, they range from fever and cough, some, in some cases, to persons who have a very, very mild cough that normally they would not have gone to the physician for, but because they were aware of COVID being circulated in St. Lucia, they did decide to go in. So to date, and I think in most of the, the, the region, it has manifested quite differently. We are not seeing the number of cases or our healthcare system being overwhelmed and um, we, are, we are happy with that but we still urge persons to take the necessary cautions and do not let your guard down. National epidemiologist explained the role the preventative measures such as the wearing of masks plays in reducing the spread of COVID-19. We kept abreast of what was happening within around the world um, looking at areas where the COVID-19 where the incidents had been increasing um, looking at our arrivals into St. Lucia we strengthened our port health um, we started putting in place certain restrictions for certain countries with a high burden of COVID-19 and I think to a large extent that that in itself restricted um, entry of COVID-19. I mean, obviously it did not restrict every single case, but I think that was a very good measure on behalf of St. Lucia and um, the rest of the region. Um, I also think that um, during the periods that we had our partial and total um, shutdown, those were very much warranted when we were able to actually go out in the field and do the necessary. And I spoke mm -hmm. to contact tracing earlier. Persons were at home and we were able to find persons pick them up very mm -hmm. early and place them in quarantine, thereby breaking that transmission cycle. St. Lucia closed its borders to the world on March 23, 2020, and as the country prepares to reopen, the government of St. Lucia has set the reopening date for June 4, 2020. Dr. Faswan noting that the threat of importing cases exists, she emphasized that all stakeholders are taking the necessary precautions to prevent such from happening. The national epidemiologist encouraged the public and the business community to continue implementing and adhering to the recommended infection prevention and control measures and physical distancing measures. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The United Nations in 1992 declared the 22nd of May International Day for Biological Diversity to celebrate the variety of living things, plants, animals and microorganisms that support everyday life. This year, the Department of Sustainable Development will once again lead the observance under the theme, Our Solutions Are in Nature. In January 2020, as part of continuing efforts to safeguard St. Lucia's biodiversity, the Cabinet of Ministers approved the second National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. This comprehensive plan takes a targeted approach to conservation, focusing on building awareness of biodiversity and assigning values to the many services that biodiversity provides. Janelle Gabriel is a Sustainable Development and Environment Officer with Responsibility for Diversity in the Department of Sustainable Development. This year, as we are looking at Biodiversity Day, the theme is Our Solutions Are in Nature. And uh, we are also um, battling this COVID pandemic. And so we have taken a new approach to raising that message, even though it's so, so very uh, tied into what is going on all around us. Right now, we are all looking within. Everybody's looking at within their borders for their own solutions. And our theme is Our Solutions Are in Nature. So us with a, an abundance of, of natural resources, we know that we have solutions in nature, solutions for health problems, cosmetic problems, beauty, uh, for business and industry and products and manufacturing, uh, to address climate change, water shortages, all of these solutions we can find in nature, we can find in the ecosystems that are around us. So our approach this year is to, to remind people, to remind them uh, that we can, we can do our own research at home, we can look, in, uh, look within, look inside of us at what we have and look for ways that we can use nature to solve our problems. 
Biodiversity has many benefits throughout the sectors, including agriculture. Agriculturists and fishers are extremely important given their significant contribution to food security and the scale at which their networks can positively impact monitoring, including data collection and conservation. Officer in charge of the marketing unit in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Thaddeus Constantine, highlighted the importance of biodiversity to the agriculture sector. In light of COVID, we have realized that we need to pay more attention to the biodiversity because the solutions are on the island. So, for example, if we look at the case of fertilizers, um, we are blessed with a, a wide range of beneficial microbes that are able to convert organic material into useful plant food, into useful fertilizers. But these are not exploited. They're not used. Well, exploited is the wrong word. They're not used wisely. And if we start to use them, it means we could start reducing the burden that we, we feel when the, the imports are closed and when the borders are closed. So, for example, pest control is one of those that we definitely have, um, we can have in a comparative advantage in um, when we look at it on a global scale. Um, fertilizers, we have a lot of plants that can be used. Um, they can be used to extract plant hormones, they can be used to extract fertilizers, liquid fertilizers for hydroponics, for backyard gardening, and there's composting. We are blessed with uh, a large collection of earthworms that we have not studied, but some of them have proved to be composters, and so they can be used for vermicompost. And it's something that the island can delve into. One of the challenges for, for St. Lucia is the, the lack of research. We need more research. We need also to bring our students and make our students part of the research. We need to make research a national undertaking so that the island can progress as it's supposed to. The St. Joseph's Convent recently presented comfort baskets for the respiratory clinics in the north of the island, as well as the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The donation is the school's contribution to the national fight against COVID-19. We have partnered with the SJC pair helpers and we have come to show a token of appreciation to our frontliners who we see are doing so much for our country right now during these trying times and we wanted to give them something that they can have on the job and to know that we see you and we appreciate you. On behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, we want to accept gracefully and gratefully this donation of care baskets to our respiratory clinics in the north. We do appreciate you very much, students and teachers, for presenting us with these care baskets in our response to COVID-19. We know we've had our respiratory clinics, our quarantine facilities, and our um, staff um, contributing towards the care and management of clients in relation to COVID-19. So we do want to thank you immensely for this presentation here this morning and we'll assure you that um, from looking at the baskets I know the staff will appreciate it and will enjoy it. So on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness once again we want to say thank you to the Today we are showing appreciation for the police department who are working tirelessly to ensure that our country goes smoothly with its recovery. We appreciate their sacrifice and we know all that they do for us. And so we'd like to present these tokens of our appreciation to say thank you for all that you do. On behalf of St. Joseph's Convent's Pair Helpers, we're more than happy to hand over to you all a small but worthy contribution for the efforts and sacrifices that you all continuously give to protect and serve our nation. We thank you. On behalf of the Commissioner of Police and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, I would like to express our gratitude to St. Joseph's Convent for your generous donation. Thank you. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All.
Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible and remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tar General, Monsieur Madame Department, quelle est votre responsabilité pour formation en gouvernement cette ci GIS à ce même télévision nationale PIA NTN Capacito Nouvelle Aquayol pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Association des avec cette ci j'ai senti pèse maladie corona et comme toutes leurs organisations et agences à PIA, tenu pour prendre des marches pour rester actif durant la mauvaise pandémie salaire. De voyant apparence à sur la télévision NTN, directeur exécutif pour l'association M. Anthony Avril déclare que l'association est obligée de suspendre cette opération pour aider à continuer le travail. Le mois de mai, il a toujours trouvé observé comme les aveugles et l'association qui a toujours célébré moi et puis plusieurs activités. Mais la maladie de Corona a changé tout ça à présent. Selon le président Avril, malgré l'association a échappé en bas de une situation finance qui a affecté l'opération sérieusement à l'année qui est passée. L'année 2020, a montré que l'association les avait déjà arrivé à établir une capacité financière significativement et un grand plan déjà en place pour célébrer en observance le mois des aveugles. Mais malheureusement, à présent, l'association, selon avril, tenait pour voir le travail. C'est à de travailler à l'encaille parce que le corona a faibli la capacité pour payer ce travail. Ça là. Mais l'exécutif exécutif ou l'association dit nous non, c'est pour nous ni un petit équipe on t'y quitte personne pour sa ouestie là pour sa bail ses moun ses clientèles noir en on t'y foi comprend pour pour sa faire au sable nous pour nous pas qu'à abandonner yo président avril a aussi fait un appel pour public là continuer longer la main pour assister association les avec avril mentionné un programme qui a conduit au lieu de cette ci pour enregistrer les gens qui ont des problèmes de vision. Si vous connaissez un monde qui n'est pas bien, même si vous avez un ticket choix, encouragez pour faire contact et puis association pour les aveugles, ou même si vous prenez le téléphone avec vous, et nous avez un numéro, vous avez un numéro en anglais, 485 uh, 720-9941-452-4691. Ça, c'est le numéro où ça a coulé. Le coulé, vous avez commandé pour Madame Rosemary, Rosemary Campton, c'est le qui est plus brutal, Madame, en Saint-Lucie. Li et puis Monsieur Rodney Maxi, c'est vous avez fait, vous avez um, déclaré uh, un song hero. Ah, ben. Bon. Rosemary Kata Pai Wed. Mais il bouge un monde pour ça arriver tout 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 petit commune en cette ici pour pour nous ça faire pour nous on grand registration tout monde qui avec et tout monde qui pas bien ouais en pays cette ici. En parmi ces membres exécutifs association qui était présent, c'était le président Glenn Simon, mademoiselle Rosemary Compton et officier des relations publiques Claudia Mallory. Ministère des Affaires, Construction et Affaires Travaux, j'ai mis la clarté concernant le sable la mer qui a trouvé fouillé pour faire chemin par de l'eau, la rivière qui a bouché la boucherie en village de Slavie. Le ministère a fait comprendre qu'il y a permission 
pour sa fête parce que euh, Jell la rivière était resté bouché pour un pile de temps à présent. Ce bureau chef ingénieur qui était bail pour permis le 12 mai, après il a reçu une application commandée permission pour amasser sa sortie à la boucherie à effort pour nettoyer et déboucher la rivière pour tirer de l'eau qui était mort aussi pour tirer de l'eau qui était mort à ce grand bol là en Slavie. Selon l'information du bureau ingénieur, permettre la terre bas conditions qui la vie a resté en bonne condition après le travail ça l'a fini et pour pièces dommages pour chimer durant et force à la c'est bureau représentatif parlement pour en Slavie qui a accepté la responsabilité pour des postes là. Le ministère des Affaires, Construction et Travaux qui a bâillé les résidents en Slavie et les citoyens, c'est ici, assurance là qui autorisation pour amasser sa blanc, mais c'est un exercice qui n'est pas nouveau et qui suit la législation de protection de la mer pays. Un geste qui a vendu produit cette ici à l'autre pays, ça c'est l'export de Saint-Louchin, qui a fait très bien à l'exportation de produits pour pays comme l'Amérique, le Canada, l'Angleterre et parmi l'autre pays international. Enfin, selon le directeur exécutif, son état Daniel, j'ai l'Amérique content en l'eau d'un oeil qu'on boit pain et produit ses mors. Mais il est plus facile pour vendre ces produits là en ces grands pays internationaux parce que c'est un pays qui a été c'est un pays là, ça c'est au ici à cela. Selon Mme Daniel, transportation avion pour ces pays là très difficile et qui a coûté en l'eau. So, ça c'est un autre bagage export de cette qui a travaillé à ça. Gardez qui moune qui n'est pas bâtiment, qui moune qui n'est pas l'autre cargo plein, nous ça parlé et puis make sure de la tous les semaines y en a un jour y a qu'un point pour douy cette ici et mener un tig par exemple nous tenir un exemple comme un tig te brise un fig et il était tellement difficile pour hein tirer fig ça cette ici mener un tig à dans sufficient time pour y faire un service à dans hôtel là il était plus aisé pour vous pour yon gagner Amérique, mené Antigue et mené cette liste ni. So pour nous, c'est really, ça c'est really un uh, challenge nous ni à um, cette liste. Pour nous, really mené ces produits ça from cette liste pour OECS. Um, Mais um, le liat moi pour nous, Caribbean Airlines. Le liat qui a porté ces bagailles là, mais le liat pas n'a pas ses capacités. So, oui. So, nous avons des bagailles qui amène Chebe en Chai. Le liat qui a aidé nous, et puis c'est des trois bagailles là, mais nous avons des bâtiments really pour mener. Puis, nous avons des bâtiments pour mener des bâtiments pour mener des bâtiments. Et, mesdames, ça c'est le côté de notre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder. Je vais avoir une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer que c'est la vie dans les postes de l'autre nouvelle à Koyo. À présent, je vais vous donner un petit peu de journal. Merci à Pil Primus. Et ça nous a fait à la fin de NTN Nightly. Joignez nous la prochaine fois à 7 p.m. avec un repeat à 7 a.m. Vous pouvez aussi vous catch up avec nous à tout le temps sur la Saint-Louis Government Facebook page ou YouTube channel. Je suis Janelle Norville.